Okay, a fable. Once upon a time, there was a developer on a horse. Um, it's uh, a true story. He said to me, and then I'll put a grocery store right on that corner. Hmm, I'm not sure there will be enough people there for that. I'm building a thousand houses out there. I'll create my own demand. This was in the days before cell phones were uh, considered acceptable. Um, really, I said, and I got out uh, my handy rules of thumb, which are fortunately very easy to remember in the world of grocery stores. Uh, $100 a week spent on groceries per household, 45,000 square feet in an average grocery store, and an average grocery store sells about $500 uh, dollars per square foot per year. So assuming his uh, 1,000 units are filled with rich people, that's 1,000 times 150 times 52, $7.8 million in spending potential. That's 15.6 thousand square feet, uh, only about enough demand for a third of a typical supermarket. Um, which actually brings up another rule of thumb, which is, would have saved me all that mass, math, which is about 10 square feet of grocery demand per household is kind of a rule of thumb. That's within a one to three mile uh, trade area. This didn't make uh, the developer happy. Uh, he said, well, don't they make them any smaller? I say, well, there are things like a Trader Joe's, but they don't seem to like Colorado and they seem to uh, like to make a lot more money per square foot, so you'd need a lot more houses, and bah, then I'd have to build sewer lines and be nice to the city, and my vision of unincorporated libertarian sprawl would be ruined. Uh, people need food. Uh, that's something that the developer at least understood. Uh, physiological needs are natural. We have to eat, health and safety. Uh, uh, not a stretch there that food is a fit with our health and safety needs, uh, but it also goes higher up the scale. Um, what about, does anyone remember Maslow? Uh, love and belonging, the, the next highest rank. I can show my uh, three children how much I love them by nourishing them with a good meal and have a romantic dinner with my wife. That happens all the time. Uh, esteem and self-actualization even come into play when you get into uh, creative uh, meal preparation and um, and eating. Uh, people will pay good money to be close to food. Uh, a study out of Portland. Uh, looked at um, uh, a bunch of houses that had sold recently and found that the ones that were near specialty grocers were 17% more valuable than the ones uh, not close to such grocers. Well, A, you may say, I told you never to tell me anything about Portland again. Uh, B, as you can clearly see from this graph, uh, grocery stores are getting larger, not smaller. They're up to 46,000 square feet just a decade or two ago. They were 35,000 square feet on average. And I, I would say yes, uh, they are getting bigger. The typical grocers like a Kroger's, a Safeway, uh, Food for Less are, are inching up the scale. But what's really driving the number are the, the super centers of the world, the Walmart, Target, Sam's, Costco. But at the same time, on the lower end of the scale, we're seeing, and that went away pretty fast, uh, smaller 15,000 square foot grocery stores. Um, there is a 15,000 square foot problem that you get into uh, trying to solve planning problems. You can run numbers on all these different types of goals uh, and a lot of times you end up with demand just for 15,000 square feet of, of grocery space and, and nothing to fill that. Well now there is something to fill that slot and they're basing themselves on the Trader Joe's model. If you remember, I said that the typical grocery store makes $500 per square foot per year. A Trader Joe's makes $1,750 per square foot per year. So that's gotten the attention of, of the other big players in the market. Uh, Tesco is a giant uh, grocery conglomerate in Britain. They're, they've unveiled fresh and easy stores. Walmart is experimenting with names and formats, market side and neighborhood market, all within that 10 to 20,000 square foot magical range. Uh, natural grocers have been playing the small format game for a long time, and uh, we're seeing a lot uh, more success there. Even Dollar General, that's a Dollar General market. Uh, there's uh, naming consulting could be used in this industry, but uh, Dollar General markets are, are coming to being. For some reason, everyone's experimenting with uh, California and Arizona. Um, we're seeing some other rules of thumb emerging that are helping us figure out why Trader Joe's has been so successful. Uh, one is you get about one SKU per square foot of store space. What's an SKU? It's uh, 
any storekeeping unit, any variety, uh, uh, all the different varieties of products in the store. Um, and with that, um, what you see, with the one SKU per square foot, you start to see things like private label branding uh, gets a lot more important. When you have a lot fewer options to show people, you're sort of picking winners, you may as well pick yourself. Um, and let's see, uh, other rules of thumb that, that come out, partly as a result of, of the one SKU per square foot, uh, distribution can make or break you. Tesco found out sort of the hard way that it sucks to be named fresh and easy when your uh, food is coming in rotten and uh, not on time. Um, when is a grocery store not a grocery? At these small format stores uh, are, are sort of raising the question. We're spending less and less on groceries as a percent of our disposable income. And so when a store gives you ready to eat food, like a lot of these small grocers do, is it still a store or is it getting into a restaurant uh, category? So what do you think uh, this map shows? I, I, I'm just blown away by this map. It looks like it could be birds, planes, maybe houses. Um, I have to wait my 20 seconds here <laughs> while you think about it. No, those are convenience stores in metropolitan Tokyo, plotted in 1993. It, it'll come up again, uh, which, it, it, you know, is just amazing. And, and, and it, it raises the question, how far down that path can we go, will we go, should we go in America? Um, I haven't even brought up issues of parking, so I'm going to say we're not going to get all the way to that many uh, stores selling food to us, but um, it, it, it's it, we're moving in that direction, and we need to start paying attention to what's going on with small format grocery stores. Um, for my last 20 second slide, I'll do a little audience participation. Have you ever noticed that when you visit another place, uh, there the other places grocery stores have silly sounding names? <laughs> Uh, King Supers uh, is what we have in, in Denver, and I've just moved to LA, and they have Ralph's, which I thought was pretty dumb, but no one seems to think that here. <laughs> uh, Treasure Island, Win dixie Piggly Wiggly, Schnooks, H-E Butts, the list goes on and on. Thank you. All right, in under seven minutes, I want every speaker to come up here and line up, just facing our audience. Just get up quickly, gotta line up, line up here. Okay, and then I want the audience to join me on the count of three. I'm going to ask all of our speakers to take a bow and I want you to join me in clapping, all right? One, two, three, yay! Good job. Thank you all very much.